is April and finally summer is over in South Africa. We are into autumn and I absolutely love the cooler days. I am so sick and tired of heat waves. Yeah, we had a very, very hot summer. So this cooler weather is most welcome and um, it makes my hands itch. I just want to knit and crochet and make some nice cozy stuff for winter. But somehow, somehow, I really screwed myself over. Man, it just happened. It was accidental. I planned on just doing the um, Cable Me Cozy blanket um, that Erin one that I'm working on and I planned to take it relaxed and whenever I'm finished then I will launch the cow look at my hair my hair is growing and it's going in all freaking directions anyway um so yeah I, I I'm getting there let me show you the panels just as a as a recap, this is the center panel. Nice fat, big fat cable with some small ones at the side. So that's the center one. And then next to that one on either side, oops, that's not good. We've got this one on the one side and this one on the other side. So what I'm doing is I want them to be different yet um, related friends yeah something like that so these two will be on either side of that center cable and then next to these two this one is oops this one is on the one side now what did i do with the other one oh here it is it's looking terribly messy i know okay so this one is on the one side this is a small baby cable I love baby cables. One of my testers, my bestie Alta, absolutely despises them. She moans with me when I put in baby cables, but I love them. And then on the other side of that will be this one. This is friends with the baby cables. So I'm still busy with this one. I think I've got about 16 pattern repeats left, I think. I will finish this panel over the weekend and then I need to look for new cables that will be different but friends with each other. So yeah, that one is going and then I thought I'm going to knit the blanket when I want and in between knit some nice um, winter stuff because I've got yarn for my husband for um i've got merino and mohair for him and he wants a cabled jersey jumper whatever you want to call it um i've got some very nice yarn for myself still from last year from color spun i know i've got erin cotton and mohair and i've got another merino one and I've got alpaca from Silky Milky Moon that I want to knit. So I thought, mm, this is going to be a great winter. I'm going to knit this blanket. And in between, I'll do some jumpers for me and my husband and publish the patterns. No rush, no pressure. And then suddenly, three pregnant people. So the one lady, her baby is already born. I was a bit late to the party. Um, little miracle baby. Uh, both her and her husband had genetic um, problems. They were told they would never conceive. And just one day, little miracle Moanzi showed up. Moa. Moa or Z. Moanzi. Moanzi. So um, I had to do a blanket for her. And I thought, oh, no big deal. I just quickly crochet a baby blanket. But you know me, um, I want to publish the pattern. Now, here comes the problem. I hate baby blankets that are full of holes, like granny blocks with holes. Because my firstborn nearly lost a finger in a crocheted baby blanket with a hole. 
her f one finger got stuck and she twisted it around and eventually by the time I realized something was wrong the finger was blue I nearly cut the blanket to get the finger out so out of principle I want to make solid baby blankets I don't like to make baby blankets if they've got holes in and that's problematic because I want to publish the pattern but crochet um, tends to be full of holes there's a lot of places where holes form I thought about doing a corner to corner but even there there's a little hole and it didn't work for me so I look um, I was looking for a more dense solid pattern and eventually I decided that I will do daisy stitch also known as star stitch now before you chew my head off for the colors in this baby blanket the mother chose the colors herself I gave her the link to Moya's color packs and she chose this one so um, I'm playing with color because the pattern is going to stay the same throughout so I'm playing with color here and it's plain daisy stitch all the way and I was beating myself thinking I can't sell a pattern with just daisy stitch but you know the more I think about it the more I think I can because daisy stitch is a little bit of a miss bitch she can go wrong very fast and she goes skew and she doesn't work properly so I've I've come up with my own version of daisy stitch and it works for me and um, it takes time to write the pattern down for somebody else and it takes time to figure out what I'm gonna do with the border so yeah I, th I think I can still um, sell it even though the pattern will be plainish so I will just make it cheaper than normal but there is a baby blanket pattern coming with daisy stitch and oh I love the texture it feels so nice what I'm gonna do for the other two I have no idea because those are it's my husband's um, niece that's expecting her second baby and it's his nephew's wife that's expecting her second baby and everybody knows Hilda is the one that knits and crochet so obviously I just got told would you please crochet a blanket for me again okay. so I can't see myself crocheting three daisy blankets that ain't gonna happen I'm gonna get bored long before I start the second one so there's two more baby blankets well there's three baby blanket patterns that you can look forward to that will come out through the course of this year sometime I don't know how I'm gonna get them done in time because I know the one uh, baby shower is in June yeah and that's not this one that one is the second one so I need to move me butt on the first one and still keep knitting on the cable blanket to uh, have a cull sometime in the year so I've successfully snowed myself under again and I don't know how I'm gonna get out of it ah well we'll just make it happen yeah so now that it's winter again or nearly winter i can start spinning again i cannot spin yarn in the summer in south africa i am left with a felted mess in my hand and it's sweaty and disgusting so i don't spin in summer it, it just doesn't work for me so I am in the middle of a spinning project that I actually started two years ago. Last year in the winter, I didn't spin at all. We were stuck in this small little townhouse and there just wasn't space for another piece of something to stand around. So I didn't spin at all last year, but I want to finish it this year. Where am I going to fit it in? I don't know. Anyway, I've um, already spun four colors let me take them out of the plastic that will be better and you can see them nicely oh, pardon my dogs they are just 
so noisy at the moment. Okay, so those are the four colors that I've already done. There's a purple and a nice butter yellow and this terracotta color and then this olive green. Now this is Ashford fiber. It's alpaca. And I think it's alpaca and merino. I'm not sure now. I will have to go check, but I know it's from Ashford. It's not the one with the silk in, it's the other one. And I know there's alpaca in, I just can't remember whether it's just alpaca or whether it's alpaca and merino. I'll have to check. And um, I still have, other than those four colors that are already done, um, I have this lovely deep red. Let me. Um, it's, it's a nice, um, yeah, it's a deep red. Yeah, I've got that. And then I have a blue. A lightish blue and I have some natural and I have some charcoal so all of these I've got one two three four that I still have to spin and four that are done so those are eight colors now do you remember well, those of you that have been with me for a while way back a couple of years back can't even remember when but it was way before lockdown it's funny that we measure everything these days and when COVID started and <laughs> pre-COVID and post-COVID <laughs> it was pre-COVID um, I knitted Stephen West's Enchanted Nisa I absolutely loved it it it's the most brilliant design I've ever seen in a jersey look I, I I'm a good designer I know I am but man there are some designers that I look at and I think when I'm big I want to be like you Stephen West is one that enchanted Misa of him it's the most funny design while you're knitting this you look at the thing and you think this is not gonna work this is not gonna work this is not gonna work because it's all skewed it looks so weird, but when you put it on, it's just like magic, and it's, oh, it's so beautiful. So I knitted one way back when, and um, I went to visit my daughter. She was still living in Cape Town at that stage, and on the way back, just before I got into the plane, I ate a jam donut, and the jam popped out of the donut, and it fell on my jersey, and got home, and I had a massive migraine and in my migraine stupidity I just placed the sweater into a bowl of water but instead of washing it immediately and rinsing it immediately I left it there and when I got back the dye of the different colors had run I had ruined my sweater we tried to over dye it, but it didn't look well. So eventually, I just cut my losses and cried a river and decided I'll knit myself another one. So this yarn that I'm spinning, I'm going to use to knit um, another Enchanted Nisa from Stephen West. Now, I really want to do it this winter, but I have freaking no idea how I'm going to fit it in. None whatsoever. I'm absolutely masterful in overloading myself. It just happens. Okay, so let me show you some of the yarns that are waiting for me. Then you'll understand why I'm so... Um, I, I wish I had more arms and hands. Imagine if I could knit on three pieces simultaneously at the same time. One pair here, one pair here, and one pair there. I will just need the brains to go with that. That might be problematic. But let me show you some of the yarns that I've got waiting. Last year, I released a pattern made with Erin Cotton and Mohair. The pattern's name is Let's Talk Purple. It was a long top, very nice to wear over um, leggings. 
and I so loved the texture of the cotton with the mohair that I bought another set. So this is one that's waiting for me. It's this deep cherry red. I know this one looks like terracotta on the screen, but it's not. It's actually a very good match. But it's going to look divine when you combine these two. So here's one project. It's something for me. It will be a loose fitting top to go over... Um, leggings again because the Erin cotton gives it quite a bit of weight it sits very nice so this is left over from last year I've still got to do this one then I also have merino and mohair that I want to combine this is kit silk um, from color spun this is a very deep emerald color um, oh, I love it. It looks so nice. I have no idea what I want to do with it. It will be a, a jersey top something for the winter, but I don't know what it's going to look like yet. I have no idea. Then I have um, just mohair from Adele's mohair, and I want to use this double strand to make um, a, a jersey. What will it look like? I have no idea. It's not in the front of my head at the moment. So this is still sitting in the queue waiting to be born. This is the alpaca that I have from Silky Milky Moon. It's, it's lace. Why did I buy lace? I have no idea. It's not, it's not really lace, it's like a baby weight, it's 500 meters to 100 grams, so it's baby weight. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do with it, I might combine it with mohair to make it a little bit thicker, I might not, I have no idea. I'll see when I get to it, so that's still in the queue rating. And then this is my husband's yarn. This is um, African Expressions. It's one of the local yarns in South Africa. It's a very nice yarn. Um, Harmony is a nice fat Erin. And this is their um, super fine mohair. And um, I was very shocked last year when I worked with a mohair for myself last year. He looked at me and said, I also want that. I like the texture. And I was like, who are you and what did you do with my husband? He never liked the fluffy stuff, but now he does. So um, I want to make him a jersey. Now let me tell you, if I want to get into shit, I must leave this for another year. Uh, that won't go down so well. So I might have to do this one before I do all the others. Anyone's cables. Yeah. And then Donna, the enabler. Donna from Colorspun. I, I think I showed these to you last month. I'm not sure. But anyway, these are her new ombre wheels and color wheels. These are the ombre wheels. Oh, These two are really calling out to me to just be born into something. But I can't start with them now. I have to finish this baby blanket first. So, <laughs> yeah. So much to do, so little time. And then a friend of mine, Michelle, she lives in Barberton, small little town. And somewhere there, she found a yarn shop that imports bales from overseas somewhere. And she saw the yarn and she sent me a photo and I said to her, bring me two balls of each because I kind of like the variegated colors. Now this is very interesting. Candy Deluxe. I've got that colorway and I've got this colorway. Let me turn it like that, then you can see a little bit better. So I've just got 200 grams in each. It will be nice for a baby something. I don't know. I'll see. But what is interesting is in South Africa at the moment, I think we pay in the region of between 180 and 240 for a hundred gram of merino more or less there, there are yarns that are more expensive I know um, and you might find some that are less expensive but 
that's the going rate. It's about 180 plus. These ones, it says wool. It doesn't tell you what type of wool. It's definitely not merino or if it is, the micron is quite high because it's not soft, soft. It's, it's, it's not scratchy, but it's not the soft merino that we used to in South Africa. But 40 rand a ball. Imagine that. And I thought that's too good to be true. There's no ways that this is wool. This is probably acrylic. That's the only way you can sell it at 40 rand a ball. So what did we do? We took a little uh, strand off and we twisted it and we did a burn test. Now I made a video on the burn test a couple of years ago. I'll, I'll go look for the link and I'll share it with you in here and the burn test 100% proof that this is 100% wool there's no acrylic in this it is just wool what kind of wool I have no idea it could be blue face lester it could be merino with a high micron count it could be corydale I don't know I have no idea I haven't gone and researched and tried to find anything on the balls. I actually forgot about them. Um, I must actually go and see if I can find out where it comes from. I don't even think that you can't even see where it's manufactured. No idea. Doesn't even say where it's manufactured on the ball bed. But 40 Rand for 100 gram, I can live with that. I definitely can. Then there's another one that's now available in the South African market. Years ago, Suprotex produced a, a genuine Merino sock yarn. And then it got discontinued a long time ago. And Suprotex has just been into cotton and acrylic since then, until now. They have launched a merino yarn this year. Let me just check whether it's 50 gram or 100 gram ball. Let me just see. I've spoken to the wool warehouse about it. Wool, wool, mm, wool warehouse. They said, how big is the ball? Is it a 50 gram ball? It's probably a 50 gram ball. I think I'd be surprised if it's bigger. No, oh, no, that's going to be fifty gram, fifty gram balls. Mm, I can't see. How, yeah, it's fifty gram balls, but the wool warehouse here in Pretoria is selling them at forty-two rand a ball, which is eighty-four rand for a hundred gram, which is still extremely affordable. I haven't worked with it, so. That is also on the list for this year. I have to try out the new yarn from Sapritex. Ha! So, um, I don't know where I'm going to fit everything in. But if you're looking for a reasonably priced merino, you might want to try that one from, from um, uh, Sapritex or L as you know it. Um, yeah, 42 rand a ball for 50 grams, not bad at all. And I understand one of the crafters said to me that she spoke to them about the sock yarn and the sock yarn is also going to apparently make a comeback which would be very nice but anyway yeah so as you can see i've completely overwhelmed myself with a nice knitting workload for this winter i have no idea how i'm going to get through it and still do the cowl and the baby blankets for all the babies that are on the way Ugh, you know, it's good problems to have. <laughs> it's not a bad problem to have. At least I have, I have yarn waiting for me. I don't have to buy any yarn this, <laughs> this year. I must just finish what I have. Then I can make a dent in my cupboard again and get some space. Because at the moment it's so stuffed. There's place for nothing in there. Absolutely nothing. Okay, great. So, um, maybe... By the time I see you again in May, I would have um, a Mohanzi blanket to show you. I'm going to call it the Mohanzi blanket. That's that little, um, the daisy stitch one. 
and hopefully I can show you some progress on the cable me cozy call that's coming and who knows I might be able to show you something else as well because my self-control where yarn is concerned what's our control what's that nah. I'll see you in May and then we see how far I am and what I've done I hope you have your hands busy and um, may the season that you are in where you live be your favorite season winter is definitely my favorite season so I am going to enjoy the next couple of months knitting spinning and crochet see you one more thing on Saturday the 22nd of April I will be um, at the Color Spun Studio in Heidelberg with a workshop on knitting for sore hands. If you knit and you have problems with your hands, then this is the workshop for you. If you are in the Gauteng region, um, take a drive with me to Heidelberg. It's not that far and we're going to spend a lovely morning in the Color Spun Studio with Donna and I will teach you alternative knitting techniques knit without having the sore hands now i'll say goodbye i'll see you next month